Hello everyone, and welcome to my first video on the ornstein ullenbeck process. In this introductory video, I will discuss the intuition behind the different terms entering this process, and will tell you about some of its important statistical properties. The ornstein ullenbeck process is named after the physicists Leonard Ornstein and George Ullenbeck. Together, in early 1900s, they worked on developing a rigorous mathematical theory of the Brownian motion, building on earlier results of Smoluchowski, Einstein, Langevin, and others. The einstein ullenbeck process is a stochastic process and is described through a stochastic differential equation. Stochasticity enters it through the second term, where Wt represents a Wiener process. Without the first term, which I will discuss shortly, the process with the second term only would correspond to diffusion, with the parameter sigma controlling the diffusion rate. In this case, the random variable x fluctuates without bounds and its spread grows in time. More specifically, the standard deviation grows as the square root of time, characteristic of a purely diffusive process. In contrast to the second term, the first term in the einstein ullenbeck equation is deterministic. It can be thought of as a restoring force that tends to bring x back to its mean value. For simplicity, this mean value is set to zero in our current discussion of the process. In the absence of the stochastic second term, x would revert back to zero from any initial condition. This reversion would occur exponentially in time, with the relaxation rate set by the parameter theta. The inverse of theta, denoted here by tau, is the time during which x decreases in magnitude by a factor of e. Tau is also called the relaxation time scale. With both terms present, we get the einstein ullenbeck process. The second stochastic term drives the process by generating fluctuations, while the restoring term suppresses these fluctuations. Importantly, while the stochastic driving is the same at all x values, the restoring effect is not. The further x deviates from zero, the larger the restoring effect becomes. This is why the stochastic term dominates the dynamics for small x values, but loses the competition to the restoring term when the deviation of x from its mean becomes large. Because large deviations get quickly suppressed, the variance of the einstein ullenbeck process is now finite, in contrast to pure diffusion. The expression for the standard deviation reflects the competition between the stochastic driving term and the deterministic restoring term. As expected, increasing the fluctuation strength sigma increases the standard deviation, while increasing the restoring parameter theta decreases it. Next, let's discuss some of the key statistical properties of the einstein ullenbeck process related to its dynamics. Specifically, let's consider stochastic realizations of the process from a given initial state and see how the mean and the variance of these different realizations evolve in time. Because the fluctuation term in the einstein ullenbeck process is additive and does not depend on what the current x value is, the dynamics of the mean is independent of noise and is given by the exponential relaxation relation that we saw earlier. It is clear from the trajectories that, starting from the same state, the different realizations of the process diverge as time grows. At a given time, the distribution of x values is Gaussian and has variance that again has an exponential dependence on time. Unlike the mean, however, the variance has two theta in the exponent, which indicates that it converges to its steady state value twice faster than the mean. It is also insightful to look at how the standard deviation changes over time, since it's a direct measure of the width of the x distribution. Its general expression, which is the square root of the variance expression, is not particularly illuminating. So let's consider the short and long time limits. At short times, the standard deviation is independent of theta and grows as the square root of time characteristic of a pure diffusion process. Because of its square root dependence, the standard deviation exhibits a very fast initial growth and reaches 50% of its long time value in approximately one seventh of the time scale tau. In contrast, the mean decreases by half in magnitude after roughly two thirds of the time scale tau, 
which is roughly five times longer than the half relaxation time of the standard deviation. At long times, both the mean and the standard deviation have an exponential relaxation. But just like the variance, the standard deviation in its approximate form has two theta in the exponent and therefore has a much faster long time relaxation dynamics compared to the mean. You can visually tell these features of the relaxation dynamics by looking at the fast diverging behavior of the sample stochastic trajectories. Now let's discuss one additional statistical attribute of the einstein nuremberg process, namely its autocorrelation function. Qualitatively, the autocorrelation function captures the degree of similarity between the values of the stochastic variable at different moments in time. Looking at the example trajectory, you can see that when the time difference is small compared to the characteristic timescale tau, the x values are highly similar. And as the time difference is increased, the two x values become less and less correlated. Another way to see this behavior is by making a scatter plot of different pairs of x values, which essentially represents their joint distribution. When the time difference is small compared to the characteristic time scale tau, the points are positioned close to the mean line, indicating their high correlation. And as the time difference becomes comparable to time tau, the points spread further away from the mean line, suggesting the loss of their correlation. Now let's do a small calculation to derive the autocorrelation function based on the earlier stated results. We start with its definition, writing the autocorrelation function as the product of xt and xt prime averaged over their joint distribution. The joint distribution can in turn be written as a product of conditional and marginal distributions. Rearranging the terms in the double integral, we can see that the mean of xt prime conditional on xt emerges. Discussed earlier, this mean represents the exponential relaxation of x over the duration t prime minus t. Substituting and taking the exponential out, we're left with the second moment of xt, which is simply the variance. This shows that the autocorrelation function decreases exponentially with the delay time which explains why 2x values lose their correlation when the delay time becomes comparable to the time scale tau. Additionally, note that the autocorrelation function remains positive for all delay times, which in our case means that the x value at a later time t prime is more likely to have the same sign as the x value at the earlier time t. This concludes my introduction to the einstein ullenbeck process. In the future, I plan to cover new topics such as parameter estimation, spectral properties, and first passage phenomena. Thank you for watching.